For the Gospel of Mark, which this Gospel comes from, this is the last healing that Jesus does, as Mark tells him. And Mark has set up the healing of Bartimaeus that we just heard as a kind of challenge and invitation to the reader, to you and I, the hearers of the Gospel. Because he's placed it at the end of Jesus' ministry in Judah and his entrance into Jerusalem. As Mark tells the story, and I'm sure you, you're going to rush home, I don't want to tell the endings, don't you? <laughs> you go to read it for yourself. But Mark tells it within a week, within seven days, Jesus will have been uh, welcomed triumphantly, uh, betrayed, arrested, tortured, executed, and rise from the dead. So he sets this up and he wants us to hear an invitation. He wants to give us an invitation, really, you and I, not just Bartimaeus. He wants to give us an invitation to see, to really see. Bartimaeus is one of the ones who calls out that Jesus is Messiah. When he says, Jesus, son of David, he's in effect calling Jesus the Messiah. In this case, unlike many cases earlier in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus does not challenge. In the earlier, when a demon that's being cast out, or a disciple, he corrects them. He backs away from the title of disciple, from Messiah. Now no more. He is the Messiah, and he's going to live his Messiahship in, a, in the Paschal mystery of the next week. And Bartimaeus, when he finally, he's He's completely determined that he's going to get to Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. And he's going to evoke his compassion. So even the crowd telling him to shut up doesn't stop him. And he's completely detached. As a beggar, the only thing he really had, as so many of the homeless, is the clothes on their back. He throws his, his cloak aside and it comes to Jesus. He's seeing, seeing, but not seeing physically, something more important. Jesus asks him, there's only two parts, in the, two places in the Gospel of Mark where Jesus uh, says, what do you want me to do for you? This is one. You remember where the other one is? Last week? <laughs> I know you remember. James and John? They say, we want you to do something. He says, what do you want me to do? Do you remember what they wanted? Sit at the right hand of God. Sit on the right and the left of God, of Jesus in his kingdom. Sarah, you were listening. That's good. The, uh, but this is a man who he wants to see. I was reading a commentary about the gospel, and the uh, person who was writing it reminded me of, of a study that I had seen uh, or read about. It's called the Invisible Gorilla. You ever heard of it? What it is, is they, uh, two psychologists take a, um, a basketball game, and uh, in the middle of the basketball game, a girl in a gorilla suit comes in and out of the basketball game as the game's going on. But what they tell the uh, test people is they're to count the number of passes of the basketball. Okay, so then they show it to all of the, the students who are their test subjects, and they're to count the, the number of passes. And most people, at the end, when they ask them at the end, uh, uh, can count, get roughly this, the right number of the passes. But almost nobody saw the gorilla. That's like, well, she went back, or the, the back and forth. Did you ever, anyone see I think it's on YouTube. You've seen it. The point is that you don't always see what you think you see. If you're focused one way, then you don't really see something else. If you're counting the passes, you don't see the gorilla. You know? Now, that's kind of similar to the point that Jesus is making. I mean, constantly, people say they see, but they don't really see the truth. You remember last week, James and John, what did they want? They wanted who's greater. That's the debate. And Jesus says, look, 
If you want to be great among you, you must be the servant of others. Remember that? And if you want to be the greatest, you must be the slave of all. That's seeing in a different way. Right? It's seeing the gorilla. You know, Jesus is saying, look deeper. Not physical sight won't do you any good unless you're seeing the real truth. And the point that Mark is making, in a way, is that, that Bartimaeus can see the gorilla. You know, he can see the forest for the trees. Uh, because what, what, what does Jesus even say to him? He says, I want to see, and he says, go on your way, your faith has saved you. He can see, he knows where compassion, he knows where healing is. Jesus says, go on your way, and what is Bartimaeus' way? It's to follow Jesus. This is a man who recovered not just his physical sight, but he had his spiritual sight already. He's able to see the truth. That's the challenge that Mark wants to give you and me. To see as Jesus sees. I know it doesn't make any sense in Washington, D.C. to say, become a servant of all. It's Washington. You know? But it does make all the sense in the world as a Christian when you can see the gorilla, when you can see the forest from the trees, when you can see the truth as it truly is. That's the challenge. And that's what Mark, as you read the rest of the gospel, as you hear the rest of the gospel, can you see the gorilla as Jesus is betrayed, as he's executed, as he rises from the dead, as there's an empty tomb? Can you really see what that means? That's the challenge. You know? And it's a challenge not just for those, but for us. A challenge to see, truly see what God is saying. You remember, there, there's so many examples of people who could not see. James, John, sure. They, they eventually they saw it. But if you remember also in Mark the story just two, three weeks ago, the rich young man, right? He says, I want eternal life. Jesus says, well, do these things. He says, I've always done those. What else must I do? He says, you remember? He says, sell your possessions, give it to the poor, come follow me. He can't do it. I have no doubt he said, heaven, what the heck? Jesus, he did the basics. But he wanted to see, but he put his possessions blind to him. You see what I mean? That was the he Bartimaeus could throw everything he had, and he could see. Even when he physically couldn't see, his faith had made him whole. I, I challenge you, or Mark challenges you rather, to see. To see the gorilla, to see the forest for the trees, to see the truth that is in you, an invitation through your baptism and mine to really see and to really follow and to really turn away from anything that makes us blind, whether that's possessions or sin or whatever, pride or whatever. Let's want to see. Let's see what God is really saying.